Mr. and Mrs. Foxen Mr. Foxen was an unpleasant-looking man, but he was not so thin as his wife. He had red hair, which always stood up straight, a red nose and red small eyes. He saw Jed and Percy and smiled. How are you, Percy, dear? he said. Did your papa come with you? Yes, he is in the house. Mrs. Foxen wants you to go home. All right. It's very pleasant to see your papa. Percy looked at him and thought that Mr. Foxen was a very unpleasant man, but he did not say a word. Jed smiled. Mr. Foxen asked Percy some questions, and Percy answered them. At that time, Mrs. Foxen was talking to Mr. Dixon. Nobody can say what I must do with the paupers, she said. The Averys spoil them too much. That's right, Mrs. Foxen, said Mr. Dixon, and that's why I put you and your husband the managers of the poorhouse. Do they trouble you much? Yes, they do. They want butter every day, said Mrs. Foxen. Think of it, butter every day for paupers. And how often do you give them butter? Only on Sundays. It's good. Well, and what else? asked Mr. Dixon. The old people want tea every day. They say Mrs. Avery gave it to them. I think she did. We mustn't spend the town's money on such things as tea. I think so. How often do you give them meat? Every other day I get the cheapest meat from the butcher, but they don't like it. They want meat every day. I tell them that if they don't like our house, that they can go to another one. Very good, very good. I think nobody has left the poorhouse. No, but one of them is going to leave it. Who is that? asked Mr. Dixon. The boy Jed. Oh, yes, that is the boy who opened the gate for me. Now, what kind of boy is he, Mrs. Foxen? He is a very bad boy, answered Mrs. Foxen. What does he do? asked Mr. Dixon. He always puts on airs. You can think that he is the manager of the poorhouse himself. He thinks that he is equal to your son, Percy. No, no, Mrs. Foxen, that is too strong. He can't be so bad. I don't think so, Mr. Dixon. One day he said that the meat wasn't fresh enough and only dogs could eat such meat. And it was so, Mrs. Foxen? asked Mr. Dixon. It wasn't fresh, of course. The weather was warm. But paupers can't have first-class hotel food. How do you think, Mr. Dixon? Certainly they can't. Then... Jed is always speaking well about Mr. and Mrs. Avery, which isn't very pleasant for Mr. Foxen and me. I think he was Mrs. Avery's pet. He was. He was brought to the poorhouse when he was a baby. I've heard Mrs. Avery looks after him as if he were her child. And she spoiled him at the town's money. Yes, at the town's money. I think you and Mr. Foxen understand that it's your duty not to spend much of the town's money. Of course, Mr. Dixon, me and Mr. Foxen understand it, but you don't pay us well enough for our hard work. I see, Mrs. Foxen. Another month will pay you more, but... I understand you, Mr. Dixon, said Mrs. Foxen. Then she took an envelope out of her pocket and gave it to Mr. Dixon. He smiled, because he knew that there was some money in it. Mr. Dixon was a rich man. The town paid him well for his work as the head of the poor. He also got five dollars a month from the Foxons, whom he had put the managers of the Scranton poorhouse. And how many paupers have you in the poorhouse now, Mrs. Foxon? asked Mr. Dixon. Nineteen, Mr. Dixon. Do you want to look at them? Yes, I do. Come in here. And Foxen took Mr. Dixon into the large room where the paupers were sitting. They were unhappy-looking people. Two old women were knitting. One thin young woman was playing with a poorly-dressed baby.
Two women were cleaning an old carpet. Others were very old and could not do anything at all. Will you say some words to them, Mr. Dixon? asked Mrs. Foxon. I'll say a few words. Listen to our dear Mr. Dixon, said Mrs. Foxon. He's going to tell you some words.